So today we are in the State House cafeteria for the first um, show of 2020 here. Uh, we've got this incredible project called the Happy Place Project um, by Rebecca Silbernagel. Uh, Rebecca is the assistant house clerk here. First assistant. First assistant house clerk here and is also an incredibly talented photographer and she's got this really wonderful show here for the month of January um, and we're also lucky enough to have her on a break here um, to be able to join us to talk a little bit about the show. So I'm going to hand this over to her for a couple minutes. Thank you. Um, so the show came about as members saw my computer screensaver on the floor, funny enough. I had some pictures of my dogs and scenic Vermont photos and at first when I put them up I thought only the speaker was going to see them and my boss. Um, not the case. And so members started talking to me about their pets and places that they liked to go. Um, and I thought, and others were very encouraging about my photography. You need to put these up. You need to, you know, show them. I thought, no, no, no. What if we make our own show of your stories that you've been telling me? So that's how this actually came about. Um, I used my photography skills and I would drive out to their home or location that they chose and take a few shots. And so there's two components to this. This is the black and white physical show, but online on Facebook. If you search um, Represent VT, you will find an album for each one of the 31 participants. And their narrative statement, which describes what they're doing, why it's special to them. So those two components work together. We just don't have the space to put all that up here. But, um, and the, the show will continue as long as I have volunteers and I already have a, a lot of people who um, have volunteered. So this is going to just keep rolling. This is the first installment. Again, our reception is um, Thursday, January 30th from 4 to 6 right here. So that's a nutshell. Great. Thank you. Thank you, yeah, and I think um, having the show in here certainly as more legislators see it, I would imagine you'll get a lot more people saying, hey, I've got a story or I would, I would like to be involved in your next iteration as well. So um, definitely a, an amazing show, uh, very interesting. I would encourage anyone who happens to be in the State House this month to stop by and, uh, and take a look. Again, on January 30th, we're going to be having a reception to celebrate uh, Rebecca and the show here from 4 to 6, and um, it's a great way to kick off 2020. So if you happen to be in the building, come by and take a look. Happy New Year. This is State Representative Mike Merwicki from the, the Wyndham 4 District of Putney, Dummerston, and Westminster down in southeast Vermont. Um, glad to be able to be back here working for, for the people in the People's House here at the Vermont House of Representatives and, and looking forward to this new, new year. Uh, these are certainly interesting times we're living in and, and it's helpful, I think, having our citizen legislature. Um, like most legislators, I work a, another, a full-time, what I call my paying job. Uh, and, and I work with kids and families, and I have for years. And uh, these, are, these are interesting times. They're tough times for a lot of families. Uh, you know, we have been uh, in, involved with a, an economic recovery uh, since 2009, when President Obama was in office. Uh, and the economic recovery has continued. However, uh, as it goes on, it's really not helping everybody. And one of the concerns we have going into the 2020 legislative session is to make the economy work for all, not just a select few. What we've seen is um, we have a cohort now of corporations and millionaires who pay little or no tax, and it affects us right down to the local level. Uh, let's say we got more money for roads, more money for education, more money for health care. You'd have lower property taxes. I know that's a concern for a lot of Vermonters that property taxes keep going on. But there is a direct connection between having a cohort of people who pay no taxes and, and higher property taxes on the local level. Uh, this president ran on one of his issues being rebuilding infrastructure. But now when Senator McConnell has been asked about that, he says there's no money left. It's all gone to the tax breaks for millionaires and corporations. So we need to do what we can here on the local level. That's why I'm supporting paid family leave. This is something that can help working families so they don't have to choose between staying home with a sick child or, or an aging parent and going to work. Uh, the other thing that will help is raising the minimum wage. 
Uh, people should be able to, to live off the work that they do. And if you're working full time, you shouldn't have to depend on government handouts and government programs, I should say, to, just to make it work. Uh, if, you're, if you're working hard, you should be able to live off what you work. And, and that's something else I think we want to change. We're really concerned about the environment here. Uh, one of the things that w we see as, as, as the air fills with carbon is, is that climate is changing. I can remember uh, probably 30 years ago you could pretty much guarantee that uh, those of us who garden or, or farmers, by mid to late September you'd have a killing frost. This year we didn't get our killing frost until the last week of October. The other thing that we're seeing is that uh, there's direct health consequences to having literally dirty air and that's one of the things we want to clean. On a global scale, Vermont has to do its part so that's why I think it's important that we look at the Global Climate Solutions Act that lines us up with the Paris Climate Accord and make sure we do our fair, our fair share here. Just like we're asking millionaires and corporations to, do, to pay their fair share in taxes so we don't have to pay such high taxes, Vermont has to do its fair share in looking at climate change and what we can do and how we can change. A lot of good things happening in Vermont that, that we are doing and uh, we want to continue to do that and, and work together to make sure that we have a, a Vermont that is strong, healthy, and provides a better future for, for us and for generations to come. So thanks a lot for the opportunity here to, to share and look forward to s talking some more as the, as the legislative session goes on. Take care. Hi, I'm John Kalaki, representative of South Burlington, and this is our first week back in the House of Representatives. And uh, my committee is General Housing and Military Affairs, and we have been very busy on this <laughs> second day of the session. Uh, we are working on moving forward compromises on paid family and medical leave and also the minimum wage and then we're looking at all the other bills that are on our wall and new bills that are being uh, introduced every day there were four more bills introduced that came into our committee yesterday there will be some more today it, it's a very exciting time because it's the second week I mean second year of the biennium so we have everything from the first year that's still on the wall for us to consider and then a whole bunch of other things but I think what's key right now for my committee is this resolution with minimum wage and paid family leave because you may remember in May there was like this, we're on the cliff of getting a resolution and the House and the Senate just couldn't agree. So I think we're much closer. I think the, the leadership on both sides did great work over the summer. Vermonters deserve a raise and we're going to give them a raise and we're going to help things out and it may not be as steep as we thought it was going to be, and it may be not over five years, but it's going to be gradual increases, and it's the beginning. It's not the end of this, it's the beginning of really making sure Vermont can be for everybody. Hi, I'm Representative Avram Pat, uh, representing the Lamoille, Washington district, which is Morristown, Elmore, Woodbury, and Worcester. I live in Worcester. And I'm a member here in the House of the Energy and Technology Committee, which deals with energy issues, obviously, uh, and which, which this year will include some significant legislation being considered around climate change. Also, we did some last year as well. Uh, and we also deal with technology in terms of broadband and issues like that, as well as the state's major information system infrastructure, uh, cybersecurity, and, and, and things like that. Um, so today, just as a, a ver the variety, we spent uh, the morning listening to updates and reports about the state's um, uh, systems and cybersecurity, uh, the systems to coordinate the benefit eligibility systems and human services, uh, and, and everything else. Uh, this afternoon, after we get off the floor, we're hearing from the uh, Commissioner of Forest Parks and Recreation about carbon sequestration. So that, that's the range of, of testimony we're taking sort of in an introductory uh, way at this point. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say is that, uh, and, and I wrote this in a report to our constituents last week, is that uh, in this day and age, pretty much everything we do here in Montpelier in the State House is in one way or another uh, uh, um, 
connected and affected by what's happening in Washington and the, and the, the state of the world, uh, whether it's political controversies, impeachment and all of that, or whether it's the, the administration cutting back on uh, environmental regulations, energy issues, um, uh, benefits, uh, food and, food and, and uh, health benefits, or all of that. We have an obligation to at least ask ourselves about all of this, is there anything we can do here about that or not? And a lot of times the answer will be or not. But that is kind of an undercurrent and an overcurrent to everything, at least in my mind than I know for a lot of other people. Uh, so we're just getting underway. I do think that we will do some uh, significant work on climate change that, that I hope will both pass and ultimately be signed into law. Hi, Senator Jeanette White here from Wyndham County District. Um, I serve on judiciary in the morning and then in the afternoon I chair Senate Government Operations. So there's clearly a lot of stuff that we have to do this year. There's stuff left over from last year because as you know the bills that didn't pass last year but didn't get vetoed um, will be still alive this year and they'll be coming to us and we'll be dealing with them. And then of course there are a lot of new bills that ha people have introduced because that's what we like to do is introduce new bills. So we're going to be do in uh, judiciary we're going to spend a lot of time on what we're calling justice reinvention I think reinvestment um, it's looking at the whole justice system and how we did it before and um, have made some major, major changes in our correction system and the whole justice system um, using the data that we found out and the think tank that we have. We're working with the um, uh, Council of State Governments Justice Center. So we're doing that. We're also looking at a, a number of smaller, well, they're not smaller issues, but not this broad. We're looking at the redoing our spousal maintenance, um, which is commonly called alimony, how we do that. Um, so there are a lot of issues. In government operations, we're going to be spending a lot of time on access to public records. There was just a court case, and um, so there's some difference of opinion of both what the statutes mean and how they should be interpreted, so we're going to be spending time on that. We're also in going to be spending a fair amount of time on law enforcement issues again this year. I know that I keep saying that every year, but it is a huge issue and we're going to be spending time with it. We're working with um, the Police Chiefs Association and the Sheriffs and Commissioner Sherling from Public Safety. We're also, one of the things that we're finding is that our emergency medical services are really in desperate straits and so actually this afternoon we're having testimony from the EMS people and they have some very concrete um, suggestions for us this year we'll be working on those um, we are, fortunately I don't think we have any elections issues to work on this year we did have a report the other day about our elections cybersecurity issues and we really don't have any we are um, we have a couple things in our favor first of all we have paper ballots we're required to have paper ballots and secondly we have um, kind of this distributed um, uh, voter registration system in each of the towns and then it comes to the Secretary of State's office and they back it up every single night every night they back it up so even if somebody got in and somehow did something to the voter registration lists it would only be for that one day so we're looking at that um, lot, lots of issues um, I'm having a hard time right now thinking of what they all are but I will say uh, oh and clearly mental health issues are uh, have always been a big concern of mine and I'm not on the health care committee but we are looking at that we are also going to be looking at um, the workforce issues in the Department of Corrections and I'm not talking here about the um, 
the charges and all that, but just what are our workforce issues? We have a huge turnover. We use a lot of temps. We, there's a lot of overtime. So we need to look at some of the underlying concerns of the workforce in the Department of Corrections. So, as always, if people have concerns and issues, call your legislator, come on up. I know it's a long way to come up from my area, but you can also testify by phone and check out the legislative website. It is really easy to use and it gives you all the information, all the schedules. Everything that's been submitted to a committee is posted there. So, thank you and I'll see you again. Hi, I'm Dick McCormick. I represent the Windsor County Senate District, Windsor County, Londonderry, and Mount Holly. I serve in the mornings on health and welfare and in the afternoon on the uh, Appropriations Committee. Uh, right now in the Appropriations Committee, we, are, uh, we have taken up the Budget Adjustment Act. Uh, Vermont's on a fiscal year from July 1st to uh, uh, June 30th. And so we're in, we've been in fiscal year 2020 since last July 1st. And that means that the budget we're living under now was developed uh, last year. Uh, during the previous session and as with with anything that involves speculation about the future which is what the budget is, always is is based on what we expect to happen as you get midway through the fiscal year you make adjustments hence the budget adjustment act uh, sometimes the adjustment is that we haven't taken in as much revenue as we thought we would and you got to figure out what to cut Sometimes it's that you've actually done a little better than you thought. And then it's, uh, and a lot of people will say, well, if we've done better than we thought, then you don't have to spend that. You know, give it, give it back to the taxpayers or, or put it aside. You know, uh, one year we, did a, we had a surplus and we did a, a rainy day fund, which was, was a, good, a good idea. But um, the fact is there are things that we choose not to spend money on not because we think it's unwise to spend the money but simply because we don't have it so then if it turns out that we do have the money then uh, probably we ought to to, to spend it and uh, so that's what we're, we're contemplating right now I'm, I'm speaking on the second day of the session so we just had a, a very very 30,000 foot view of the budget adjustment act but we will be uh, getting in, into the into the weeds on it in, in the uh, I'm mixing metaphors sorry 30,000 foot getting into the well no those those metaphors work we're <laughs> getting into the weeds and uh, uh, we'll decide what to spend some more money on and also what what to cut on there are times when we think maybe we didn't need to do this after all um, then we'll of course get into the budget that's what the Appropriations Committee does. Uh, health and welfare, uh, my God, we've got a, a list a mile long of things to, to deal with, um, having to do with the, the perennials. Health care, the expenses of health care, uh, just the way health care is organized or disorganized. Um, and then I'm working as well. I, I um, am a member of the Climate Caucus, and I can't adequately express how wonderful it is after, in my case, 30 years of trying to get people to take climate change seriously that I see now a really loud and vociferous public demand that government actually start to do something about climate change. I, it is a little bit frustrating to that I find uh, people scolding all of us as though, you know, uh, after 30 years of being called a, a green sneakers and an alarmist and a fanatic, and, and now suddenly I'm hearing, Senator, you've been there all these years, why haven't you personally taken care of global warming? But um, my answer is, you know, I'm, I'm glad you're here. Um, finally. <laughs> Welcome on board. And uh, we're there is a, a whole package of climate related legislative proposals coming from the climate caucus a lot of people who really know the issue well uh, are angry that it's not nearly ambitious enough but there are other people and we have to deal with them who um, who are saying it's too we're, we're going too far 
So that's what politics does. That's what the legislature does. Is you, you try to get something through that you can get through, that you can get the votes for. Um, I've said to people who, who complain that the Climate Caucus proposal is too tame, I say you're only thinking about two questions. What is the problem and how bad is it? And if you think about that, then yes, the Climate solu Caucus uh, solutions are, are, are too tame. I've got a third question. Besides how, what is the problem and how bad is it? The third one is, what are we likely to actually get passed? And that means you kind of rein it in a little bit. And it's frustrating. You're looking at this massive problem and seeing it treated as sort of, well, you know, in a perfect world, maybe we wouldn't have global warming, but, you know, that's, uh, I, I'm particularly frustrated when people argue against um, carbon pricing. And I understand the arguments against carbon pricing, namely that they, they left without a lot of bells and whistles, uh, carbon pricing is regressive. It puts a heavier burden on low-income working people than on, on everyone else. And that's a real problem. But I'm going to say, if someone doesn't like this or that proposal, for dealing with climate change, it really is an inc it's incumbent upon them to not just say what they're against. They got to tell us what it is we should do instead. Otherwise, it implies that climate change is less of a problem than it actually is. So um, that's that's the big one. One l particular thing that I've been working on is is civics education, and um, I thought I was dead in the water last year on that, but it seems to have come back to life. A lot of people are noticing that we, we were a republic and the citizens of a republic have to know the ground rules or the republic doesn't work as a republic. It's that basic. We have large numbers of people who just don't know how their government works and it, they need to know that. So I think we're going to get something on, on civics. I talked a long time this time. <laughs> Thanks. So I'm Representative Felicia Leffler. I represent Enosburg and Montgomery up in Franklin County. And I am absolutely honored to be back under the Golden Dome here in Montpelier, representing them again this year. And I think the most important things that I am looking to kind of keep my thumb on and report back home and represent their wishes on this year is uh, the paid family leave and how that impacts them directly. Um, our minimum wage and how that affects our small businesses, especially those with only a, a handful of employees that are struggling to keep going. And most importantly, how the TCI and the carbon tax therein is really going to impact our rural community and those of us that don't have access to alternative fuels and uh, kind of the, the way that they'd like us to modify our homes that's not possible for those of us out, out in the sticks. Um, we're also working really hard down here to address some of the critical issues that have been hitting us in the last couple of months. Um, in the Corrections Committee, we're really taking a hard review of our facilities, um, our inmates, our corrections officers, our supervision, and how we can do an overhaul of each of those to properly address a lot of the concerns that have been raised, uh, both in inmate safety and CO burnout. And the ability to provide health and safety for those that are doing what can be the hardest job in state government. Um, I think it's also important to look over into the education committee and follow the literacy bills that are coming forward. Um, my bill I introduced for constituents up in Montgomery um, is getting some wonderful traction, H406, uh, which is early screening in dyslexia. And we are getting some movement on that, as well as some partnered bills in the Senate and the House that I think will create a really cohesive package to address our children and what we can offer them in schools to create an education system that best represents them and their needs. Um, so that's going to be an absolute priority for me to make happen for them this year. And I think other than that, it's just really talking to them, listening as much as I can to, to your wishes and following along with the direction you've given me while I'm here. Hi, I'm Representative Mike Intachka from Charlotte, and um, I serve on the House Energy and Technology Committee. I've uh, been working 
on energy policy for the last nine years, and I'm uh, proud that we've been able to make Vermont a leader in terms of renewable energy and <coughs> energy efficiency. The reports from the international uh, scientific organizations have really um, been emphasizing that we have a very limited time in order to address the issues of climate, climate change. Uh, this is at crisis proportions now. We're seeing it in how and the effects in uh, increased flooding uh, in coastal areas, um, increased rainfall all over the place, and, except for in the west where there's a drought and increased wildfires. So uh, this is something that, that we have to pay real close attention to and do something about. Um, in Vermont, last year we saw youth and others uh, mobilizing along with others across the world to uh, require governments to, to request the governments do something about climate change. Um, I'm looking forward to working with my co colleagues this year to uh, take effective action with the Global Warming Solutions Act and other climate uh, initiatives to uh, help reduce Vermont's greenhouse gases, which are relatively small, but um, it's something we have a responsibility to do our part for. So um, again, uh, I'm looking forward to working with my colleagues to do, to do that in a way that's going to be economically affordable for Vermonters, as well as helping them save money. Well, good afternoon. Uh, Representative Mark Higley here from uh, Lowell. Represent Lowell, J. Westfield, Troy, and Eden. Here again with Rick, start of the 2020 session. Um, just like to talk maybe about uh, uh, the CUDs, Communication Union Districts, that uh, our committee last year uh, established a process for creating these, uh, these districts. And, and up my way, uh, there's a Northeast Kingdom District that's looking at uh, being created to hopefully bring some high-speed internet uh, to the area, or at least some, some more options. Um, and so that's, that's a good thing. Uh, that'll be on the ballot at uh, a lot of my town meetings. Uh, to, to look at joining this, the CUD. Um, being on energy and technology, of course, this year we're going to have a number of uh, climate change initiatives. Um, one is the Global Warming Solutions Act. I believe the other one would be the uh, Transportation Climate Initiative. Uh, I'm not sure of others, but uh, again, some real concern uh, for, for me and my rural constituents uh, around that. Um, I also sat uh, this, this summer fall on a uh, study committee around looking at uh, forest carbon sequestration. Uh, very interesting, uh, a lot to it. It's not as simple as, uh, as you might think. Um, uh, but we, we did look at uh, uh, the possibility of uh, forest land being enrolled in some of these uh, uh, carbon credit uh, projects and, and we put out a report and it was uh, presented by uh, Commissioner Michael Snyder today, as a matter of fact, in our committee. Um, so there's a lot going on. Uh, again, uh, a lot of concern around um, uh, some of the Global Warming uh, uh, Solutions Act and so on. Uh, my, my biggest concern is that um, I hope that uh, we, can, we can deal with these issues with calm heads and be respectful of, of each other as well as uh, try not to instill in our youth that uh, the world will be coming to an end in 10 years. Uh, that to me is a real concern and, and we can work on these issues and, and come to some co conclusions uh, respectfully and, and I just hope that uh, we keep the rhetoric down. So thanks again and, and I'll sign off.